the North Africa Journal and thank you for downloading this podcast. For more podcasts, information and user rules, please visit north-africa.com slash podcast. Hello, this is Areski Dode of the North Africa Journal. Today is January 21st, 2011, and the following audio file is a brief discussion on some of the people who surrounded President Ben Ali prior to leaving the country. Uh, three, char- three personalities will be discussed here, namely his wife, his son-in-law, and his wife's nephew. Thank you for listening. Among the figures that uh, angry Tunisians are fixated on is Sakhar al-Matri. Uh, his trajectory is, is becoming shockingly identical to that of Algeria's disgraced businessman Abdelmoumen Khalifa. Uh, both young, both inexperienced, both deeply corrupt, essentially ending in hiding in the UK for Khalifa and probably in Dubai for al-Matri. Uh, originating from yet another prominent family, Sakhar is known for investing in lucrative businesses, uh, yet his biggest coup was probably his marriage to Ben Ali's daughter, uh, the, uh, the former president of Tunisia. Uh, today, as the drama began to unfold in Tunisia, Sakhr has been at the top of a vast business empire that spans from tourism to automobiles and real estate to media. Many of such businesses, such as his car dealerships, have been actually destroyed by demonstrators in the most current events. While the Tunisian people have long recognized the, the dysfunctional nature of Sahar al-Matri and what he represented, the West rather cozied up to him and often treated him like royalty. He happens to be the chairman of the Tunisia-US Parliamentary Friendship Group and was awarded in October 2010 the Guido Dorso Prize, a prize that, quote, quote uh, honors the most deserving in the field of media and publishing, unquote. The prize was handed to him by the Italian far-right senator Renato Cifani. But for the American diplomats based in Tunis, there was no ambiguity about the man. He is part of the Ben Ali system deeply rooted into it, perhaps the next generation that would carry the misdeeds of the dictator. Uh, WikiLeaks shows a U.S. Embassy cable summary that states that Sakhri madri and quote here, was living in the midst of great wealth and excess, illustrating one reason resentment of President Ben Ali's in-laws is increasing, unquote. But who really is Sakhri al-Matri? I mean, coming from a Tunis family, he grew up in a political and wealthy environment. He is the nephew of Mahmoud al-Matri, uh, one of the first Muslim students to graduate from the Paris Medical School, or Faculté de, de Médecine de Paris, uh, back in 1927. This event, the graduation that is, paved the way for the al Matri's family then to engage in economic and political pursuits. Indeed, later, Mahmoud al Matri became a figure uh, of the opposition against French occupation and a co-founder of the neo Destour party, which became later the party in power, the Rassemblement Constitutionnel Démocratique, or RCD. Enabling the upward movement of his siblings, Mahmoud al-Matri helped his brother Monsef, and that would be Sakhr's father, shift from a military career to business. With another brother, Tahar, Monsef established in the early 1970s a pharmaceutical company called Al-Adwiya, or uh, Medicines in Arabic, uh, one of Tunisia's biggest private drug companies today. He uh, later expanded into food and agriculture, amassing a fortune that his son, uh, Sakhar, could later use for his own purposes. Groomed to take over the business, Sakhar is reported to have a master's in management sciences. Uh, right after graduating, he joined his father's drug firm, al Edwia, where he... Uh, apparently still remains a member of the board, at least before the Jasmine Revolution began. Uh, Meanwhile, he married Nasreen, the daughter of the president of the country, and in in 2005 he oversaw his company's stake acquisition in Nestle, Tunisia. Uh, This deal was uh, was a watershed event that led him to begin to somewhat distance himself from, from his family, at least his family business, to run solo. 
That same year, he purchased from the Italian financial institution Monte de Pece de Siena the 16% equity that particular firm controlled uh, in the Tunisian Banque du Sud, only to resell it to a much bigger profit, for a much bigger profit. The proceeds of this of his sale went towards the acquisition of the Euro distributor in Naples. Turns out, it was not a legal acquisition, but a pure gift from the Ben Ali's to their son-in-law. That company held the monopoly of the distribution uh, of all German cars in Tunisia. He could he continued on his expansion path to create in 2007 trucks grow and cars grow. Uh, two wholesalers of auto parts for the Volkswagen, Audi, and Porsche models. In mid-2008, he inked a deal with the Renault Trucks International company to open an industrial vehicle unit. Uh, outside of the auto and the truck business, he established the Goulet Shipping Services and the new cruise port in La Goulette. One business venture after another, Sartre continued to purchase or create new firms, such as real estate firms Les Hirondelles and Le Marchand, and the Ben Ali affiliation helped greatly. Without such affiliation, nothing could have happened. All of these businesses uh, fell under the umbrella of a holding uh, company called the Princess El Madri Holding, officially established in 2008. So this is a very fairly recent uh, initiative. Said to be a devout religious figure, something that is... Uh, more of a public image than a reality, he established a religious station, a, radi a religious radio station called Zaytuna, and in late 2009 he opened an Islamic bank to offer Sharia banking services and expanding into uh, Islamic insurance as well. In his final grab uh, of resources before the Tunisian people took to the street, Sahel al Madri managed to take over the mobile phone operator Tunisiana where he was appointed chairman of the board. Uh, the deal came after he inked an agreement with Qatar National Telecommunication, or QTEL, uh, to take over the stake sold by uh, Egypt's Orascom. As such, Sahar would control 25% of Tunisiana, while the national mobile telecommunications company KSC Wataniya, a subsidiary uh, which is 52% owned, a little over 52.5% owned by QTEL, would control the remaining 75% of what is Tunisia's second largest tele telephone, mobile telephone operator with uh, nearly 6 million subscribers. Although entrepreneurship uh, with buying and creating companies are, or is uh, to be encouraged since they, they do create real value, wealth and jobs, the fast expanding empire of the 30 year old Sahar was only made possible by a corrupt environment where transparency is non-existent. Uh, if his rapid rise in business was uh, was all legal, then how can one explain the, the very point Sartre made to the American ambassador when he said about the Tunisian bureaucracy, quote, it is difficult to get things done, communication inside the bureaucracy is terrible, uh, end of quote. There's still a great deal to learn about the workings of those who surrounded the Ben Ali regime, but as Tunisians seek to start a new chapter, new information is likely to emerge on how a nation is plundered by a corrupt elite. Sahar is certainly not the only one, uh, too many of them, but certainly the first lady's family, the Trabelsis, uh, have also attracted a great deal of hatred, in particular one of their of of uh, of the first lady's protege Imad Trabelsi, um, her nephew. Uh, th the drama of the moment amid the ousting of President Ben Ali has reached a such a fever pitch that sadly uh, Imad Trabelsi ended up killed, uh, assassinated after apparently being stabbed on Friday uh, by a, a former business partner. Imad has been accused by the French legal authorities of taking part. In criminal organ, in a criminal organization that uh, essentially stole yachts in uh, from you know from southern Europe, uh, Imad always claimed his uh, his innocence, uh, and nothing has been proven. Uh, he hasn't been proven guilty yet. Uh, Imad's business also spanned from uh, from real estate to retail distribution. He he was the mayor uh, of La Goulette municipality, most of which acquired through shadowy transactions and operations. Uh, also, uh, as a mayor, apparently he was, you know, he was aided by and, and by by the president, 
uh, in general. We often focus on President Ben Ali himself uh, as, ruthless, as a ruthless dictator, but the Tunisian people have shown tremendous hatred also toward the First Lady, in particular towards the First Lady, Leila uh, Ben Ali Trabalsi, and, and what she represented as well. The woman is said to be the uh, a real deal maker. She, she can make or break anyone in the Tunisian political, social, and economic scenes, just as she apparently led to the demise of the one of the, the once powerful brother of Ben Ali, Monsef Ben Ali, uh, she was also behind the fall of one leading uh, of other leading figures uh, who were around the president, including the mysterious Kamal Al Taif and Salim Sh Shihoub, uh, to name just a few. Uh, many things have been said about her. Firstly, she comes from a poor family with ten siblings. She worked as a hairdresser and divorced her first husband three years uh, after marrying him. Uh, sources say uh, she she broke the law with small cross-border trafficking uh, activities not reported anywhere in official records and uh, and that's how she probably met her future husband to be that is security chief Zin Abidin Ben Ali uh, while she was under arrest. <coughs> Observers uh, and and a, and a book about her published in in France say prior to meeting Ben Ali she had uh, she had an affair with businessman Farid Mukhtar. Who who died a few years later in in a mysterious car car accident uh, while taking side against the Ben Ali regime on on the political sphere. Uh, Leila Ben Ali is reported to be surrounded by again brother Bel Hassan Bel Hassan Trabelsi, her nephew Imad, who we talked about a few seconds ago, and her son-in-law Sakhr Al Matri, also who we talked about a few minutes ago. Uh, but Hassan Trabelsi said to be uh, in, in the business of buying historical land and sites at rock, rock bottom prices and reselling them at premium prices after forcing local authorities to issue building permits despite their status of historical sites. Uh, again, uh, finally, Imad, Imad Trabelsi has had serious issues with the French justice system for his alleged involvement in the theft of yachts in Corsica. Uh, finally, Leila Ben Ali said to be behind Sakhal Al Matri, her son in law. Uh, behind sort of his stellar rise in business, helping him build uh, a, a, a fast-growing empire at an unprecedented pace. With that, we thank you for listening, and um, uh, we hope uh, you will hear our next releases going forward. Thank you. This was the North Africa Journal podcast. Thank you for listening.